what it means for the plans going forward. For a while, it, when the offseason began, it seemed like the Celtics were saving up all of their space and didn't want to do anything. And then news of the smart thing comes out. And it's like, oh, I guess that's not the case. Now everyone's wondering, what does this mean? So, you know, we all, we've been kicking this around and nobody really knows. What it does mean for a fact is, look, it, Beal was really hard, even with all of their cost-saving moves. You would have had to find a way to renounce Al, dump everybody from your roster, renounce, or get rid of Al, renounce Rob, uh, not re-sign Smart, not re-sign Fournier, and basically have Tatum, Brown, Neesmith, Pritchard, and 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 Beal, and then about $10 million to field the rest of your team. That's roughly what would have had to happen to get Beal. So they, it was going to be hard in free agency anyway, but now you don't have the space. You don't really have any space now. Uh, you've just got Marcus Smart. So this is your team going forward or you're trading, and I don't know what this means. So what are your initial thoughts here? We've talked about this, John. If Beal isn't necessarily in the cards, they should probably stick with what the core they have going forward because what are you going to get that's better here? I've, I've never been a person who said that Smart's a detriment or that Smart just needs to go to shake this up or Smart needs to go in any kind of deal here. I think you trade Smart if it makes sense and it packages up to a star. And if that thing isn't out there, then you keep Marcus Smart because he's a really, really good player. I mean, this, this guy's his defense did slip a little bit last year. There may be concerns of him possibly sliding more than a normal player would because of the physical aspect of his game. But I'd never like the idea of possibly letting him go for nothing. Like that would have been the final straw, I said, of this huge process they've been going through where it's been Al and Kyrie and Fournier now and Smart. There's still something funny with the Beal situation. And – I was right. just going to bring that up. Yeah, you you did go all the way in that way. <laughs> we got to have takes, right? But look, <laughs> there are there there are a lot of indications on the Beal front. No, but, we said we'd have a pretty good idea pretty soon of how certain. And they it are. looked and like it because they were signals. clearing. Yeah, they were yeah. clearing the thing. My only thought on Smart is this, and I said it again. I was talking to some guys in the chat, um, uh, beforehand. And we talked about this on our thread. Was this a hedge? Okay. Now, I think so. so you didn't want to go all in with Fournier and Smart, but you didn't want to be in a situation where you get nothing next year. You can't get a max guy or you can't work out a trade for anything or things don't work out for you and you're left with nothing. Um, and that was that. I still think there's a world in which the Beal thing is something that they want to do. And if smart is a path, the question becomes whether smart can be part of a package to Washington. And we'll talk about that in a little bit because we, we differ on this one. Okay. It's the path to Beal involved trade, not free agency. It had to happen that way. So it's still open, but they would have to, the problem now is they have to want what you have. And I don't know if smart is that thing. So it doesn't kill you on Beal at all, but I do think it's a bit of a hedge on the Celtics, which is to say, I got to have something, you know, in the bag because I can't trade. I can't roll smart into anything if he's in a contract year because there's no certainty to wherever he goes that he's going to stay. Um, so maybe they think that this is a movable deal um, and that's something that we'd rather hold on to the asset and worst case scenario, I keep Marcus smart. I think it's a hedge. I don't think Beal is completely out the window, um, but I don't, Washington would have to want this. So you're in a gun to their head scenario where the only way this works is if Beal goes to Washington is like, does the Anthony Davis, like I want to go there. So make it happen. Uh, and I'm not going to resign with any other team. So there's really no reason to send me anywhere. So recoup what you can. And then they have to take whatever they take. Yeah, there's, there's three ways you could look at it. You, you could look at it as a hedge. You could look at it as them acknowledging how difficult it would have been to do the Beal and free agency path where you would have had three stars and essentially nothing left. Nothing, and that. nothing left, right. Yeah. We eventually all came to the realization that that was going to be a hard team to win a championship with despite the top end talent there. Because, I mean, that Heat team was bad with like Mike Bibby and Joel Anthony to start that year. 
this would have been even worse than that, I, I would imagine. Now, you do have some young guys here who have shown some signs. Maybe Neesmith and Pritchard would have factored in with that team, but I don't know. Like, it really was looking like a thin, uh, you know, bench-deprived group if you went in that direction. You think, now, the Celtics this- watched, you think the Celtics watched Summer League and they're like, <laughs> forget about it. Like, Neesmith, Beal, run it. Uh, Neesmith, Pritchard, run it back. Who needs Beal? <laughs> well, this is what's interesting here. I, I, I have a hard time seeing why it went from we need all this flexibility we can't do two years for a jeff green we can't do two years to a patty for a patty mills that kind of guy and that did work out with schroeder but they were fixated on the one-year deals and all that cap space and they said it right to us this isn't something we assumed they said this in press conference after press conference we need the flexibility they didn't say one-year deals but that's what they did and then they just wiped out that space which like something had to change along the line here, right? Because they were doing this one way and now they're heading in a different direction. Is it because of possible concerns about placating smart here? Like, I think that could be a factor here that you, you had this leak, you had this premonition that maybe smart would be going out the door for someone like Lonzo ball here in free agency that kind of fell apart. And now to fix this situation a little bit, and absolve some like uncertainty going forward here with what you're going to do. This might've been the best way to do all those different things. And yes, hedge a bunch of different situations. If you're coming down to when you're Washington and you're saying, all right, Beal's gone, he's choosing Boston and we either get nothing, which actually is what Brooklyn chose in the Dinwiddie trade here. Although they were in a hard cap situation. Right. Um, right, right. Or, or you get smart. You probably just take smart if you're Washington, because it's better than nothing. And the money works out there. Maybe they take another young player or two. But in these sign-and-trade scenarios, uh, I, I just read about one the other day. Um, not that Pelicans one, but one that was a year or so before that. Like Teams will ask for things, and the team that's receiving the player in the sign-and-trade will just kind of say no because the player's coming. It's done. And even in a situation where the Bulls didn't have cap space and had no leverage there, like they won the negotiation. and basically traded two guys off their bench for Alonzo Ball. So I think the way the league is set up right now, just in terms of the player power, like any team that's receiving a player who wants to come to a team can basically send whatever they want back. And in this case, like it'd just be smart to make the money work. So I don't really think there's like a pull and tug negotiation between the Wizards and the Celtics at the end of the day there. If Beal wants to come to Boston. Now the question is, does he want to come to Boston? I still don't think we have a firm answer on that, but that's why this is kind of a leverage play. 